Okay, we're here today with the Multicam 3000 series CNC router that you see here behind me. And what we're going to do in this video is give you some of the basic setup instructions that we normally take care of during an on-site installation, which is, of course, always available. Right now, with the travel restrictions and the pandemic, we're making this video available to some of our customers to make it a little bit easier to get started without having to hire somebody on-site to get things going. So we're going to go over some of the basic keypad instructions as well as calibrating your tools and getting the machine ready to run. Here's a quick look inside the electrical cabinet of the Multicam. Your incoming power is going to be in this upper right-hand corner. We've got the three legs for a three-phase connection plus the ground goes right into there. So you should have four wires total. Now, once we have this connected and you've turned it on, we're going to check to make sure we've got proper voltage on all three legs. In my building, it's 210, and that should be consistent amongst all three of those legs. I would want you to consult with your electrician on this as well. And then the next thing I'm going to check is I'm going to, with the power off and the breakers off, I'm going to check my tap transformer connections. There's some detailed information over here. Again, you're going to want to consult an electrician and the manufacturer for both the information of the tap transformer. I do have a chart I'll provide, but use that just for educational purposes only. And basically what this does is dials in your electricity uh, to an exact spec based on your incoming voltage. So like, like I said, mine is 210. You might have 220 or 230 or even 240. So you would change these settings based on the tap transform information. And I'll provide a chart in this video as well. Mine is 210, so the, the, the one that fits me best is the 213 setting. And that would be the 1 and 6 and 2 and 7. And that's how that works there. And so that's one of the things we would do upon installation. We would also check all these connections, make sure all the breakers and everything is good and that nothing has wiggled loose during transport. And this is our 20 volt, 24 volt power supply. Down here is the 5 volt power supply. And there's an adjustment knob here. This is key that this is set exactly at 5 volts or maybe 5.05. .05. We can't have anything too high or too low. That'll cause your keypad, your controller, at the machine to malfunction. So that's a quick look and overview of the setup inside the cabinet and what we do during a normal setup and installation. Here's a quick shot at the regulator on the Multicam 3000 series CNC router. Should be between 90 and 100 PSI. Ours is set just over 100. And so you want to make sure you get good, clean, dry air before beginning production. When the machine first fires on, it'll load the software, enable the drives, and now you're in a ready-to-start state. The first thing we're going to do is hit the shift button, and then this button in the upper corner, that's going to initialize the machine. Initializing spindle. We also have the Multicam Fast Start Guide that we've customized and we will make available to our customers uh, via email upon request. The first thing it asks us to do is return all tools to the tool holder. And that's telling you that if you had accidentally left something in the spindle overnight, turned the machine off prematurely, and the machine still had a tool in there, it would allow you to remove that manually right now. We don't have a tool, so we can continue by hitting enter. Now the machine is finding home, so it's moving to all of its limits going to the proximity sensors in XY, and it already went to Z, and now the machine is homing. The homing procedure shouldn't take too long, but it will depend on where you parked the machine when you last used it. And that's what we want to see, a nice quick homing procedure. If the machine is taking too long, in excess of 20, 30 seconds or longer, then the the entry probably needs to be calibrated and squared in order for the machine to function properly. Now that the machine is home, it's asking if we want to do a spindle warm up and which tool we'd like to use. And this is recommended to do on a regular basis. Now I'm going to go ahead and say let's do tool 3, so I'll change that number to 3, and then enter for a warm up. The machine will then run back, grab the appropriate tool, and begin the warm up procedure.
Notice the machine remained in the rear and moved to the center and then lowered the dust shroud and the spindle is now turned on and warming up. So this is a safety feature built into the controller to make it as hard as possible for us to access that spindle. That's why the spindle doesn't come all the way to the front and sit right here where my hand can easily touch it. It's in the back, in the middle, and I'd have to go through some effort to try to get my hands on that spindle while it's running. The reason they do that is it's so quiet, as you can tell right now, and we can barely hear that spindle, and that's in a completely quiet shop. If you had other machines running and other people working, you would virtually hear nothing on that spindle. Moving on with our daily setup, we're going to calibrate any new tools. Again, only new tools. So if I haven't put any new tools in my tool holders today, I can skip this step. For training purposes, we're gonna go ahead and calibrate this tool right here that's in the spindle. So if I go to menu, and then I go over to ATC, and calibrate tools, the first option, I'm gonna hit enter. Which number would I like to calibrate? It's highlighted on three since that's already in the spindle, and I'm gonna hit enter for yes. The Z will move up. The machine moves in rapid speed out to the calibration plot and then is ready for my next command. So as you can see, it's right over the calibration block. You will notice that spoil board is bowed and the vacuum will, will pull that down. That happens especially during warmer weather. These spoil boards tend to start to curl and that will be no problem. We'll just make sure the vacuum sucks that down. But as you can see, my tool is right over the calibration block. I'm going to grab my grounding magnet because the ceramic bearings in the spindle we do require a grounding magnet we simply take this grounding magnet and just attach it to the side of the tool or the tool holder very simple now I'll grab the keypad and we'll finish the procedure okay we can jog manually by just hitting the Z down arrow and get this close whatever you're comfortable with. And then when you're close, and I'll move this out of the way so we can see a little better. So now with the tool close, we simply go back to our keypad and it says zero to auto set. So if we hold zero down, it'll remind us to put the grounding clip on. And then we're simply gonna hold it until it touches off. And it automatically raises and that tool is now calibrated. We can continue now and calibrate additional tools, or we can move on to the next step. Okay, the next step on our Multicam Fast Start ATC guide is to turn on the table vacuum. Now that's down here. Uh, we've got this particular switch uh, mounted to the machine itself, and this was an auxiliary switch for a dust collector. So you could utilize a switch like that on your machine if you'd like. Um, for the vacuum pump, uh, due to the video and for sound purposes, we're not going to turn this on, but you definitely want to get into the habit of doing that anytime you set your surface or your max depth, which are the next steps. If the table is not sucked down totally with the vacuum, you will obviously not get the correct depth on your setting. So make sure that's on, and then we'll proceed to the setting the surface and max depth. Now you can set surface on top of your material or on the bottom of your material. That's going to depend on your application, your business and how you set up your CAD CAM software. Machine and most softwares can do either way. So we're going to do, for the purpose of this video, uh, setting your surface on top of the material, and then a multicam specific feature, we're gonna set our max depth. And that's a neat safety feature. If we accidentally put in the wrong depth, instead of 0.75, we type in 7.5. Most machines, the machine would attempt to go seven and a half inches below. On this machine, this puts a hard stop inside the controller where no matter what depth we get, it will not go past the spoil board. So that's the, the uh, benefit of having the max depth feature on a multicam. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit our set surface button, which is the tool on top of the material. It says which tool do you want to use. I'm going to hit enter to use tool 3. And now we are ready to set our surface. Now just like calibrating the tool, all I've got to do now is hit the zero button. It's going to remind me to put that grounding clip on, which we have on, that little magnet. And then I'm simply going to hold the zero, and that's going to start moving that tool down towards our surface block. 
Well, as soon as it makes contact, it will automatically lift up on its own. And now the surface is set. Okay, now with my surface set, I'm going to move to the spoil board. I'm going to set my maximum depth. Now I'm going to manually bring it down a little bit, just so I don't have to wait as long. Whatever you're comfortable with. Then we're going to hit our max depth button. And then zero to auto set. It reminds me to put the magnetic grounding clip on, which it has. And then I'm just going to hold zero, and it's going to automatically pop up. Now my max depth is set. So my surface is set here, so it knows where the material starts. And it knows where the bottom of my material is, so it won't go through this floorboard. And that is my surface and max depth set. Okay, the next step in our Multicam Fast Start ATC guide is to adjust the maximum depth. This is an optional setting. Remember, we're setting our maximum depth here, but most uh, applications are going to require you to go through that scoreboard just a little bit in order to get a nice clean cut. You can see some of these faint lines in the scoreboard. If we don't go through here at all, we'll oftentimes leave a little bit of um, material on our parts that we're cutting, and we don't want that. We want a nice clean cut. So we will go through this uh, a few thousandths of an inch. And so to do that, we simply go to the keypad, and we hit Shift, Max Step, and that allows us to adjust that max depth. We just go up, and we can adjust that five to seven thousandths, whatever we like. Hit enter, and that max depth has been adjusted. Now we can look and verify our depth anytime we go into the menu and go into parameters and go down to cut depth. And you can see that our maximum depth right now is 0.781. So it took the thickness of this, which is 0.776 added five thousandths to it so we're going through this spoil board to the full thickness of the sheet and five thousandths into the spoil board giving us a total of 0.781 for our maximum depth now that will be the maximum no matter what the cad cam program tells us to do so if it tells us to cut in uh, an inch it's going to go 0.781 if it tells us to go a half inch it's going to go exactly a half inch so it won't go all the way through but this will just be a hard stop programmed into the controller. So that's how that max depth works. We're going to move on to the next step in our fast start ETC guide. And that is to set or choose a home position or origin. Now, we're going to always choose something in this corner. But depending on my material size, I can do the extent of my table or I can do anything on the machine itself. So I have some flexibility in what I choose for my starting position. Of course, that can be saved and recalled from the keypad at any time. So if I just hit home, and then number one, the machine will move to a pre-programmed home position. And then if I hit the Z down arrow, you can see that that is right on the corner of that material where I have my blocks set up. I've got some wooden blocks uh, nailed into the spoil board that give me that, that position right there. So that's a saved position. I've called that up and now on the keypad you can see that that is saved. It's listed as home number one. So I can do that. If I'm setting a new position, I simply hit the shift button first and then the home button and then whatever number I want to save it as and it will permanently save the spot. So that's how we set our origin. That origin is now set and that will remain set for the rest of the day unless I change it or turn the machine off. And that just about wraps up all the steps for our Multicam Fast Start ATC guide. We've turned the machine on, we've homed it, we've calibrated any new tools, we set an origin, we set our surface, our max depth, we've adjusted our max depth. We also had the vacuum pump on that whole time in order to get a proper depth setting. One of the last steps would be to turn on a dust collector. Again, you could wire that to a switch on your machine. Or you could just have a standalone uh, push button like this roll around unit or like the large unit that I have in the back of our shop, uh, the nice Oneida system back there, you would turn that on. You definitely do not want to run one of these machines without a dust collector attached. You can see I've got no dust collector attached here. And it would, think it would just get real messy and you'd have way too much dust moving around and that wouldn't be good for your tools or for the machine's longevity. So we absolutely recommend you should have a dust collector before attempting to do any cutting. That's the last step is to turn on that dust collector and then we'd be ready to run our file. So we'd go over here 
There's a button that shows the router connected to a PC. Simply hit that button, list of your files will pop up, choose the file you want, and hit the start button to run. And that's been your quick setup guide and walkthrough of the Multicam 3000 series CNC router. Hope this helps. If you like this video and watch this video, please hit the subscribe button. That enables us to continue to offer videos like this to our customers. And if you have any questions, comments, or looking for a new or used CNC router, please make sure to give us a call. We'd love to help.